An ocean liner is a totally enclosed system. It has medical, hospitals, emergency rooms, but it has no kitchens in the bedrooms. There's a dining area. And it's inefficient to put a kitchen in every bedroom on the ocean liner. Do you understand that? So they have areas set aside for that. They have a nurse, uh, or several nurses, on the ocean liner. Well, what does a nurse do? A nurse can bandage, she can close in surgery, uh, but there's no reason why the future will not have an automated system for doing that. They can invite a doctor from any area of the globe on the board that boat. They can invite him as a virtual image or as a symbol manipulator, and that doctor can study the condition without being there. So you have a totally different system. That's why I use the term total enclosure systems. Each building generates its own electricity. It provides for all human needs and even grows food in the building or prepares food. Today you have places where you have fast food, you have 15 cooks and waitresses and all that. In the future, you'll be able to extrude the food very rapidly with no people at all. You don't need people. You don't need waiters, cooks and all. What you need is the food handled the way the food is handled by people only much faster. Remember, it takes a doctor time to diagnose. He's got to study the symbols and tell what the problem might be. And scanning by machine is very fast. So I can't tell you exactly what hospitals will look like or what the cities will look like, although we know that beds would be very similar, only they'll be more flexible. And then not only that, the bed will have monitors built in so that if you, there's any kind of emergency, the bed can stimulate you out of that emergency and call for help without you even knowing it. If you had palpitations or unusual physical condition while you're asleep, a staff would arrive. So when I say total enclosure, I mean methods for dealing with all problems that humans might have. Now, does that mean there won't be a kitchen in every home? There will be during the transition. Until we realize, instead of having 5,000 homes with 5,000 sinks and 5,000 ovens and refrigerators, you have gigantic refrigerators and a food preparation system. Do you understand that? It will not be like it is today. So when people look at these cities that I draw up here, they picture conventional approaches. A bedroom, a kitchen, a dining room, a dining area. Of course, you have people over for lunch. The same value systems we have today. So I would say that this is where the future is going. And the future design would depend on how far into the future and how far technology has gone. When they can read symbols and make diagnosis, when a machine can do drafting, instead of thousands of draftsmen, a machine can do drafting much faster than man, can scan those lines in. If you put in the specifications of what you want, if you want a hospital to house a thousand people with the most economical structures, which are having built-in heating and cooling systems, all that can be stored in information systems. And the building can probably be forthcoming in minutes and rather hours that it takes draftsmen to do it. And the amount of draftsmen and the amount of space allotted for things will not be the same. If you took an industrial area with movable walls, and if some manufacturing process needed, say, the production of a hundred air cars a day, that space could be assembled. The move walls could move to accommodate the production methods. If the production methods are faster, two years from now, the walls come together, the factory is smaller, and the production rate is higher. So whatever you have today, ovens, kitchens, all those things, will be smaller in the future 
produce things much faster and not occupy the same space. So when you say, how much space do you need for hospitals? It depends. If people eat nutritious food, do exercise, you don't have many hospitals. So I can't tell you exactly what the hospital space will be or how technical they will be. I can only say this. The future will occupy much less space for the same turnout. And that's the message. Now, if you try to design a city with a hundred drafting tables in it, or a hundred or thirty machines, that is with today's thinking. And the building will get the zone that creates that will be smaller and have less people. Now, instead of having generalists, where the doctor is a generalist and he knows everything from neurology to other physical problems, it's much easier to have computers with that information. Not only do they scan you and record in symbolic logic what the condition is, it is then read. Instead of doctors, it's read by machine very rapidly. And then the appropriate action can be taken by machine, if it's surgery or whatever else is required. So to sit down and design a surgical system based on today's values and today's methodology would be inappropriate for the future. So a city of that size will do 10 times the work that a city today of the same size does. That's why I can't give you an exact description of what hospitals will be like, only an overview in general. A ship is a total enclosure system. A passenger liner that has a thousand passengers has hospital equipment, cooking, dining areas, sleeping areas, air condition, children's room, and nurses take care of children. It has everything that a thousand passengers may need. Do you understand that? A ship is almost a total enclosure system. It doesn't generate its own energy. It uses machines, diesel engines, to generate electricity, to operate the generators. But in the future, the surface of the ship will supply the energy needed. The wave power and, and surrounding areas will supply that ship with the energy it needs rather than require input. Now, most of the buildings that I draw that you see there can be put in the cities of the future on the outer perimeter. You need not, you can use the same basic drawings that I have today, but trying to fill in the buildings as to what's in them, I'd rather not divulge that specific information. Now, I can go into specifics, but they would only serve temporarily. The method of delivery of people or moving people depends on the technology of the future, and it depends on how easy it is to move people. But if you have total enclosure systems, it means each system is self-operating doesn't depend on central power, but they're all connected to the central computer and they're connected to all events in other cities. If the city system mechanisms fail, other mechanisms take over and notify the appropriate people or the appropriate machines to carry out a given task. Now they took all kinds of cardiograms of me today and then it goes to cardiologists. And the blood test is divided into different systems where people with microscopes analyze the blood. Whatever they see, they draw conclusions. And if it's symbolic rather than visual, they draw conclusions. Machines can draw the same conclusions and many more. They've had experience, experiments where they've given the same blood to many different labs and they draw different conclusions. I know, because their equipment yeah. varies well, in sensitivity mm -hmm. sometimes. And then the time period and the temperature and other variables which are not controlled. And also the profit motive affects how late their equipment is, how modern. And people are more concerned with how many customers or how many clients they've had. The future concerns is optimizing human performance, which is very different, or equipment performance, 
optimal, making it the optimal. And all information is available, there are no patents. So you can use the latest information in designing your machinery. And you can correspond with people that know more about it than you do, or you can correspond with machines that know more about it than you do. I can't say. Depends on when it's built.